Even the IMF isn't safe. Hackers working for a foreign government made off with documents and emails and perhaps the most brazen cyber attack yet. One that has shaken the foundations of international security and exposed the international economy to unknown risks. For more, our friend Richard Falkenrath is here. Richard is a contributing editor and he's a principal of the Chertoff Group, a consulting firm that specializes in security. Richard. Good to have you here. Does this particular attack raise the cybersecurity alarm to a new level? Well, there have been so many over the last year or so that I think it's more of a pattern that we're seeing that the major institutions of, uh, of global uh, governance and global finance are all being attacked. And the IMF is uh, nothing special in this, res in this respect. There nothing special well. in the sense that the fact that it's exposed to a hack attack is just like Sony or Google or perhaps the U.S. government. That's right. And now it is a particularly important institution in global finance, and so uh, it raises other issues about who has access to their systems, how are the personnel uh, selected who work there. Um, but, you know, there have been a lot of hacks in the last uh, 12, 18 months. There certainly have. Richard, our reporting suggests this particular attack was sponsored by a foreign government, as I was saying. Should we be quick to draw the assumption that this is China, or could it be another country? I think it could be quite a number of different countries. I mean, this is uh, the IMF is involved all over the world. Uh, countries in every continent have a stake in their policies. The IMF has been very active in Europe, uh, for example, and the European governments are are not uh, adverse to espionage either. Imagine if it were the Germans or perhaps even the Greeks. Possibly. There are any number of possibilities here. Uh, my question really is, let's, let's bring it home to the United States for a moment, because we know that the American government has been hacked. Uh, it makes me wonder whether we are fighting the wrong war. We're spending billions of dollars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and yet it seems as though perhaps the greatest economic threat the United States faces, and one that is important to everybody in the country, is this, cybersecurity. Well, it certainly is one of the many threats we face and one that we have to work on very hard and spend a lot of money on. There has been a lot of activity in this area, Eric, uh, in the last five years at, in the U.S. government. And what we're seeing is the slow dissemination of that message into other governments and into these international organizations, which historically have changed their ways very slowly. Uh, and so I think that's what's probably happened here is the IMF has realized that, boy, we need to get up to speed on cybersecurity as well. And that's not to say that the U.S. government has solved all of its problems problems either. There are still many vulnerabilities in U.S. government networks, uh, but at least the problem has been teed up, identified, and, and uh, attacked. Well, you do get the feeling that people inside parts of the government definitely get it. There was this story in the New York Times over the weekend about how the State Department, right, is aware of the, call it, disruptive power that uh, hackers can have or like hackers can have for diplomatic purposes. Well, that's right. And that story, the juxtaposition of these two stories is very interesting because on the one hand, you have an institution being hacked. On the other hand, you have a report that the United States is in fact assisting um, third parties, citizens, to circumvent the information control procedures of their home governments, uh, which is a somewhat tense uh, uh, activity. And it's akin to hacking in a, in a respect, right? If you have people in Afghanistan or Pakistan setting up uh, third-party cell networks, as you say, to circumvent uh, national security systems, uh, it raises some big questions about what constitutes hacking and really whether we're not just doing the same thing in other countries that is in a way happening to us. Well, that's exactly right. And if you look at it from the perspective of one of these repressive governments with whom we have diplomatic relations, by the way, this is not just hacking. This is subversion. This is a concerted effort by the United States to undermine their, their system of government, which we may think is okay because we don't like their system of government, but they're the ones who are in the government there. And it's a real uh, dilemma. We promote this concept of Internet freedom and Secretary Clinton has talked a very big game about internet freedom and she looks in this time to be putting her money where her mouth is. Well, uh, it could expose us to accusations of duplicity at the same time. Richard, always great to have you here. Our friend and contributing editor Richard Falkenrath, a principal at the Chertoff Group.